the brain is very complex, and scientists have said it's not entirely understood. Back in 2012, Dr. Eben Alexander from Lynchburg, Virginia, was eating dinner with his family. It was here that contaminated food gave the doctor an E. coli meningitis infection, and it started to attack his brain. Alexander is a Harvard neurosurgeon, and after getting this, his chances of survival were slim. He was taken to the emergency room where he was put into a week-long coma, with brain scans showing that things were not looking up. Doctors who were looking after him announced that his entire cortex, which can be found towards the front, was not functioning properly. The cortex is extremely important for human function. It receives information about touch-related sensations like pain and temperature. It's also the part that gives us consciousness. After running more tests, the doctors said that things were not looking up, and that if he did survive, it was likely that he would suffer some type of brain damage. Holly Anderson said the following about the doctor's condition. Nurses would come in. They'd pull back his eyelids, shining the flashlight in his eyes were just off. It was just like no one was in there. As mentioned by the National Health Service, a coma is a state of unconsciousness where a person is unresponsive and cannot be woken. Someone who is in a coma is unconscious and has minimal brain activity. They're alive but they can't be woken up and they show no signs of awareness. The person's eyes will be closed and they'll appear to be unresponsive to their environment. They won't normally respond to pain or sound, or be able to communicate or move voluntary, and basic reflexes such as coughing and swallowing will be greatly reduced. They will be able to breathe on their own, although some people require a machine to help them breathe. Over time, the person may start to gradually regain consciousness and become more aware. Some people will wake up after a few weeks, while others may go into a vegetative or minimal conscious state. Due to the response from the doctors, those watching over him were not confident, and said to the family that his chances of survival were low. Incredibly though, Dr. Alexander suddenly woke up. Not only this, but he claims that the doctors were right, and that he wasn't there. He said that only the primitive parts of his brain were working, what the doctor said next surprised everyone. He said that he journeyed to heaven and saw the afterlife. Dr. Alexander said the following. In every sense of the word, that's what my experience showed me. My first memories from when I was deep inside. I had no language. All my earthly memories were gone. I had no body awareness at all. I was just a speck of awareness in a dark, murky environment in roots or vessels or something, and I seemed to be there for a very long time. I would say years. I was rescued by this beautiful spinning white light that had a melody, an incredible beautiful melody. It then opened into a bright valley, an extremely verdant valley with blossoming flowers, and a just incredible rich ultra real world of indescribable complexity. Alexander then goes on to detail that he encountered a young woman who was able to travel through space and time, saying that this humanoid would give him messages from heaven. He carried on with the following. She looked at me and this was with no words, but the concepts came straight into my mind. You are love, you are cherished. There's nothing you have to fear. There's nothing you can do wrong. It was all eternity and all conscious existence but it was this brilliant orb of light that was almost as necessary as a translator, and it brought me the message from the divine and the incredible. After this experience, Alexander was taken home to recover. Shortly after recovering, he was shown a photograph of his biological sister that he'd never seen before. The doctor was adopted. As soon as he saw the woman in the photograph, he recognized her as the being that was traveling through space and time. He said the following, I looked up at that picture on my dresser that I'd just got, and I knew who my guardian angel was. It was the most profound experience I've ever had in my life. 
Not everyone is impressed with his story though, although there's many that believe him and said that his encounter is proof of heaven in the afterlife. There are scientists and others who have spent their life studying the brain, have said this is a case of hallucination. Dr. Alexander responded with the following, I know this is not a hallucination, not a dream, not what we call a confabulation. I know that it really occurred, and I know it occurred outside my brain. Alexander goes on to detail that this journey would not have been possible due to the state he was in, and said he can debunk every theory that other scientists have put forward. He said the following about his condition, If he would have asked me before my coma, how much was someone who was in a coma for a week with severe bacterial meningitis, so severe that the sugar level around my brain, normally around 60 to 80, and in bad meningitis goes down to 20, but in my case it went down to 1. That's just one piece of evidence of how severe this was. If you asked me how much would that patient remember, I'd say nothing. They wouldn't remember a single thing. The severity of meningitis would have prevented dreams, hallucinations and confabulations, because those things all require a fairly coordinated amount of cortex. He goes on to say that he is a skeptic himself, but after experiencing this he now has a solid answer as to whether heaven is real or not, and says that he knows that is real. He said the following, For me it's become clear that the best way to look at it is to turn around, and realise that consciousness exists in a much richer form, independent and free of the brain which is everything to do with the eternity of our souls, and the fact that our awareness, our consciousness, our soul, our spirit, does not depend on the existence of the brain in the physical universe. In fact, it's freed up to be much richer knowing we're outside. Although skeptics have denied these claims and said that what the doctor encountered was just a hallucination, other researchers have come forward in recent years and said the brain is very complex, and that the soul of a person is in the microtubules of the brain cells. It sounds confusing, but doctors think the human brain is just a biological computer, and the consciousness we experience is run by the computer inside the brain. This means it will continue to exist after the human is gone. Both of them suggest that what humans think of consciousness is the result of the effects of quantum gravity that is situated in the microtubules. So what do you make of this story, and do you think that heaven exists? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.